And welcome sports fans to today's roundtable and it's a very exciting time of year especially for a high school basketball fan coming down to the end of the, the basketball season here this week and even next week and crowning state champions along the process especially this weekend. State championship games are taking place today on Saturday and a lot to look forward to uh, from that uh, from these games and we got a chance for some SEMO teams to be crowned as state champions later on today so that's going to be very exciting and also the bigger schools class four and five are still in their state tournament play and they'll have their final fours for next week so the smaller schools uh, getting their they're chasing glory this weekend for an eventual state championships also some heartbreak as well that comes along with it if you happen to happen to stumble in the final four there's some heartbreak at the end of the season at season as well when it comes to the teams that uh, come home other than a national or a state champion. So we'll be talking about what happened at, in Columbia over the last few days and a recap of what's happening. Also a preview of some state tournament games taking place today and also an update on Class 4 and 5 uh, boys and girls state tournaments. So look forward to that in today's program. And uh, we're going to take a look at the games that took place Thursday in the semifinal round. And taking a look at those games, starting with uh, the boys' class two semifinals. It was Scott County Central over Crane, 60 to 49. No problem for the Braves as they advance to the state championship game in class two. They're already the defending one class, uh, defending defending class one state champions. Now going up a class this year to class two, looking to repeat as the champion in class two. So uh, quite a run that Scott County Central is on, especially going up in class and going for a state title this season. So they've got a chance for that. We'll talk about that a little later in our program once we preview that state championship game. And also in the boys class one semifinals, advance come up a bit short against Meadville and a final score of 63 to 51. The advance Hornets had a great game uh, pretty much two and a half quarters, but in the, in the latter part of the third quarter, Meadville, who's undefeated, number one ranked team in class one going into this tournament, uh, made a nice run and pretty much held on to it throughout the uh, third, latter third and fourth quarter to run away with that victory. But Advance, a uh, great season. They, they uh, lined up in the third place game. In the third place game and defeated Leeton in the third place game 69 to 53 so the Advance Hornets come away with third place in the class one state tournament and Advance moved down from class two to class one this year and performed very well throughout this tournament uh, probably the game of this tournament was Advance beating South Iron South Iron was a top five ranked team I believe they were two or three in the class one state rankings and widely considered to, to make a run at a state championship, but it was Advance defeating them in the quarterfinal round to advance to the Final Four in Columbia. So Advance had a great run, finishing with third place. Uh, job well done by the Advance Hornets. And in other games, he, uh, Thursday in the semifinals, in the Class Three semifinals, it was Strafford defeating New Madrid County Central 63-61. And a heartbreaking loss for the New Matter County Central Eagles. Very good game between these two teams. Two very good teams. Very well matched teams. Uh, Stratford had a five point lead at half, and it was up as many as 12 in the second quarter. New Matter came out in the third quarter strong. Opened up with a 16 to 2 run to start, uh, or, or for the third quarter, uh, to start the third quarter, 16 to 2 run. And I think they were ahead by five or six at the end of the third quarter and made a great run in the third quarter. Fourth quarter, they were up six with two minutes to go. And uh, Stratford came up with two straight three-pointers. And with the game tied, New Matter shot a little shot too quick, gave the ball right back uh, to Stratford. And uh, Stratford came down, killed the clock all the way down to about 14 seconds. And on an inbound play, a uh, kid got loose on the left side of the court, went up, and got fouled, hit two free throws, and uh, what really, uh, really made it tough for the Eagles. They came down. Willie Jemerson, their all-state uh, potential all-state guard, came down, uh, drew the attention, uh, to, threw it down to Aston Newsom, got deflected out of bounds, and with eight seconds left, they inbounded it 
Jefferson had another shot to drive, dumped it down to Aston Newsom again, and he was right under the goal, got it, went up, and double clutched. Uh, maybe he thought, uh, you know, a defender was behind him. Maybe he thought he was going to make a play on the ball, so he double clutched and got the ball off, but it hit the, the padding on the backboard. Jemerson went up for the rebound as well as Newsom. They both uh, grabbed the ball, but um, Jemerson came down with it, but when he he tried to gain possession of it. It actually deflected off of uh, Newsom's head and lost control of it, and that was the game. And uh, just a heartbreaking loss for the Eagles as they were up six with two minutes to go, and uh, it was Strafford going on an eight nothing run to finish that game, and the Eagles uh, fell in the semifinal round. And the first time they've been there since 2002. A uh, team very poised to play in the state championship game, and uh, they looked like the better team in that game. You could tell even the first half. You know, if New Madrid ever got their tempo going and getting out on the break and scoring, that they were going to take control of the game, as they did in the third quarter. And the fourth quarter, they had control, but uh, Stratford came up with some plays late when they needed it, and uh, that was the difference of the game. And a uh, tough loss for New Madrid. They're playing in the third-place game, and we'll see how that plays out uh, for the Eagles playing in third place. But a fine season for New Madrid. Uh, when you talk about playing as well as they did in New Madrid in the – uh, CMO Conference, they're having a share of the CMO Conference titles. They're a little, there's going to have to be a discussion about how they're going to um, count the, the win or count the number of games in the CMO Conference. No matter it had a game or two less than the other teams due to some cancellations late in the season, uh, but they've got as many wins as the other teams. It's just a matter of games played. But the just going in, there's a three place tie for the CMO Conference title, and they're one of the teams. And uh, with the run they've had through the Class Three tournament, you know, beating Charleston in double overtime, and then beating Park Hill Central by 30 up at Jefferson College in Hillsboro, and uh, making it back to the Final Four, uh, they've had a successful season. Just comes down to a few plays being the difference, and that was the case with the Eagles. And uh, they're going to be playing for third place. And now going over to the girls, and it's uh, the girls' Class 1 semifinals. Naylor handled Discumbia, no problem, 57-38. to The Naylor Lady Eagles going to the state championship in Class 1 later on today. So a lot to look forward to for the Naylor Lady Eagles playing in that state championship game. And also uh, the girls' Class 3 semifinals. It was Park Hill Central. Handling Buffalo 60 to 41, no problem for the Lady Rebels, Park Hill Central, and they will advance on to play in the state championship game as well for this Saturday. So, uh, got two local teams there. Uh, Park Hill Central not as local, but in the southeastern region, Naylor and Park Hill Central going to be competing in that and those uh, state championships Saturday afternoon. So, it's uh, very rare you get. Two teams playing in the state championship from the south from southeast Missouri, but we're going to have some teams compete in state title games for Saturday, and it's uh, going to be very exciting to see how it all turns out uh, for this Saturday afternoon. It's going to be fun to watch to see uh, who can come home with the state championship. So we got three teams playing for state championships: Scott County Central for the boys, Naylor and Park Hill Central for the girls. So we'll see what happens. For this Saturday, and we're going to take a break and be be along with Travis Quatermus, and he's going to talk with us about those state championship games to look forward to on this Saturday, and also a preview of Class Four and Five games taking place this week, and uh, on the road to the Final Four in Classes Four and Five for next week as well. So we're going to be back with that coming up. We want a chance to earn your business here at Harry Blackwell Ford in Malden, Missouri. And with prices like these, we will. This is a 2008 Buick Lucern CXS with a V8 engine, 50,000 miles, all the optional equipment on a car. New car trade-in from right here in Malden, and it's only 11 dollars I'm Harry Blackwell inviting you to join our family for your next automobile. Deposit your check here. Or here. Or even there. Deposit your check wherever you are with First Midwest Bank's new mobile deposit. 
Just tap, snap, deposit. It's that simple. New mobile deposit from First Midwest Bank, serving the communities we call home. Clear! There's a better way to jumpstart your soil back to health. Apply Enzone to protect and increase nitrogen efficiency without killing bacteria. Apply Prevent to increase phosphorus availability and reduce fixation. Better yet, use them both to get more from your fertilizer investment and see higher potential yields. Ag Explorer, your prescription for healthy soil. The competitive edge. It's the edge that sets you apart from your competition. Every business needs it. Now every business can get it. Partner with Advanced Business Solutions and give your business the competitive edge. Advanced Business Solutions delivered by New Wave offers scalable fiber optic based internet solutions to fit your needs. Now you can download without the wait on a network designed for you. Call Advanced Business Solutions and get the competitive edge for as low as $39.99 per month. And we're back along with Travis Quatermas to talk about the Final Four that's taking place this weekend in Classes 1 through 3. Also, we're going to talk about the Class 4 and 5 quarterfinals. That's going to be determining the Final Four participants in Class 4 and 5 for this weekend. So, uh, Travis, it's been a very exciting week. Uh, this Thursday started the semifinals. We got to see some uh, third-place games Friday in the championship games. That will be played on Saturday. So, a uh, very exciting time. Yeah, the thrill of victory, the agony oh, of defeat. Man. That's the thing. You talk about these teams that are losing up there. It's just, you know, it, you get so amped up for these teams to do well, and then it just all comes crashing down to an end. Yeah, and, sometimes uh, it comes down to just one play, like we saw with New Madrid and their loss to Stratford or earlier in the week with the Dexter girls versus North County. It just, I mean, one play decides the game and decides your season. And, oh, that's a – that's a, that's – tough to live with but these kids are very resilient and and they'll do fine they've got memories to last a lifetime hey they can say we were there yeah sure can and uh, let's talk about some of these games that took place this week uh, we'll just go ahead and start off with uh, advance and class one met up with a very good team in class and the class one semifinals Meadville is undefeated uh, I believe it was 29-0 coming into the game and uh, number one ranked team in class one. So they knew they had their hands full with Advance. Advance got out to a nice start. Yeah, they got up early. They came out just red hot. They jumped out seven to nothing, forced three uh, Medville turnovers, and it looked like they were just going to run them out of the gym. But uh, Medville hung in there. They were still, I think Advance had a five-point lead at the half. But... Uh, Medville came out smoking out of the second half. They very quickly took the lead, and uh, they outscored Advance by about 20 points in the second half. So it was just sort of a tale of two halves there. You know, Advance dominated the first half, but couldn't quite put them away, and then Medville just came out and showed why they were the number one ranked team in Class 1 undefeated and really took control of the game. And But congratulations to Advance. They had a great season. Well, they just came out of nowhere here at the end of the season. They were very up and down through most of the season, and uh, then came out district champs for the second year in a row. We saw them play a tight game with Adva or with Gideon in the sectional round at Bloomfield. Uh, Preston Webker hitting that late three-pointer to give them a lead mm -hmm. and the game winner. And then he did the same thing to South Iron, and nobody thought they could beat South Iron, but they did. And you know they didn't they didn't take the lead until that game until very late. Yeah. And Webker hit the game winner again. So they've just had a great season. Like won the third place game very handily, like you said, and and got quite a few kids coming back next year. So uh, good things ahead for the Advance Hornets. Yeah, and a very, very good season. They kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, you know, they Advance, really did. Even in the Stoddard County, you know, they didn't even play on the final day. Of no, the they Stoddard knocked County out in the tournament. first round. Yeah, so we didn't get to see a whole lot of Advance in big games until it came district time. And, you know, going from Class 2 down to Class 1, they took advantage. And uh, maybe the team's not used to seeing them as much. And... They, they slipped up on right. some people and did really they well. They sure did. Well, you've got one thing you can say about the teams that come out of southeast Missouri. They are battle-tested. Mm -hmm. Well, Advance came through a rigorous uh, Stoddard County Athletic Association uh, run there, and they played some tough teams. They, they played the Dexters and the Bernies and the Bloomfields and the Woodlands. Um, 
they had a pretty solid Christmas tournament up in the CMO, uh, Southeast Missouri Christmas Tournament in Cape. So they were battle tested and Coach Wheatley's team really came together there at the end and, and boy, what a run. They've got a lot to be proud of. Yeah, a uh, great season by Advance and uh, one that you always kind of think in your mind, hey, remember when Advance, you know, put together that run, right. went to the state, state Final Four. It's kind of one of those seasons that right. you'll kind of and, and you know, you talk about turning the tables, sort of poetic justice there. They win the sectional or the quarterfinal game over South Iron, kind of at a, with a buzzer beater, about four seconds left to play. That's exactly how they lost the quarterfinal game last year to Thayer, got beat on a buzzer beater. So uh, they sort of flipped the script this year, and uh, so congratulations to Coach Bubba Wheatley and the Advance Hornets uh, on a great season. Sure, great season by Advance. And uh, now looking to Class 2, Scott County Central, you know, no, no stranger to the state championship game. They find themselves in it again right. up in Class 2 this year. It's what's made it a little bit more impressive this year. Uh, some may be thinking, you know, if that great team that won it last year in Class 1, no problem, you know, losing to Lorandis Banks, among some others. Right. It's going to be a little tougher going up to Class 2 this year, but with Jeffrey Porter playing as strong as he has, among the others that have really contributed, find themselves in the Class 2 state title game, beat the number one ranked team in Class 2 in Crane yesterday. Right. Really no problem. They got out and pretty much kept the lead uh, in that victory uh, over Crane as it was 60 to 49 so you know they've they've handled business like they sure Scott have. County does. Yeah they've had some players really step up that saw limited minutes last year but seniors like Javonta Daniel and Matthew Blissett, Drake Kessler uh, they really stepped up and, and really balanced this team out uh, so Jeffrey Porter hasn't had to do it all for them and that showed yesterday uh, Porter didn't have his best game he was very quiet up until about midway through the fourth quarter, and then it's just like somebody flipped a switch on him somewhere, uh, and he just took over the game. And they went on about a 11 to two run to close that thing out, and most of the points scored down the stretch by Porter. Um, so they, uh, boy, when they get to Columbia, you just can't bet against Scott County Central, you know. And you uh, talk about a team that's battle tested. Oh man, I mean, Scott County, they play in the Riverman Classic. The first of the year, they played teams out of Memphis. Right. You know, you know, teams that are invited there out of Memphis, Little Rock. A lot of the time, they play those big schools, and then they play, they play in the Christmas tournament up at Cape. So they'll yeah. either run into Charleston, Jackson, Cape, one of those Notre big Dame. schools, Notre Dame, and they play quite a few Semo Conference schools in the regular season. Right. You know, even beat New Madrid this year. Beat them there at the end of the season. Uh, yeah. You know, at, on their home court, so. You won't find any small school team better tested than yeah. Scott County. Two victories over Charleston. They ran Haytai out of the gym. So they're undefeated in 2015. <laughs> they haven't lost a game since the calendar turned in uh, January 1. And so I expect them to win uh, today. They yeah. play a mid-Buchanan team that's got a very impressive record. They've only lost one game. They come in like 29-1. and one. Uh, But it's championship time. That's Scott County Central time. And I think they I think they bring home state title number 18. Yeah, and that's what we've seen over the past couple of years. Scott County will be up there with a decent record by, you know, once you compare them to the other teams. They're, they'll come in with six, seven losses. This year they got a really good record. Yeah, they've only lost four games. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll come in there. I, I know a couple of years ago, uh, the team, the kind of the Cinderella Scott County team that no one expected to win the year after Porter. Right. Yeah, I mean, Porter and yeah, they lost 10 or 11 games that year. Yeah, they lost like 10 games, I think, that year. Yeah. They went and won the championship game against Drexel, and that was kind of their only Cinderella run right. these past years that some exactly. may, may not have expected them to win. And, you know, they, they're going up there against teams that are undefeated, one loss, two loss, and just wipe them out. You yeah. know, that it, Crane it, was a pretty good team. I mean, they played Scott County tough, but they never they got as close as one point, I think, at one point before they went on that big run to close the game out in the at the end of the fourth quarter. So they were a pretty good team. I mean they, they deserved to be there, but that was probably gonna be Scott County's biggest challenge. I think they they'll they'll cruise to their eighteen state title. Eighteen. That's unbelievable. State record. Yeah, nobody's yeah. nobody's no, nobody close. else is close. Not not even close. Charleston's got eleven, but that's uh, yeah that that that's the closest competitor. Yeah, that's very impressive. It really is. It is. Yeah, yeah that, they've had a great program for thirty years. I mean, just year in and year out, you know. I mean, the one constant is that Scott County Central gonna be gonna yeah. be there in the end. Yeah. Well, they they have had some rough years. I will say that. You know, 
I remember our basketball preview at the beginning of this year, David Heap was on, talked about the few years that he was there. You know, people don't always remember the, the yeah. down years. You know, they'll remember everything else. But there's been a few rough years there at Scott County, but they're few and far between. Few and far between, <laughs> yes. That's Great right. Great program there. Yeah. And uh, like we said, they're going for their 18th state championship against Mid Buchanan. Uh, for Saturday, I don't know exactly the time. On 11 a.m. Just as we're going off the air, they'll be tipping off there yeah. in Columbia. So they've got and, the early game. Yeah, and that you can catch all these games on Fox Sports Midwest Plus, the Plus channel. It's channel 80 on your new wave cable, not 25 that you're used to watching the Cardinal games and whatnot. It's the Plus channel, Fox Sports Midwest Plus, channel 80 on your new wave cable. And I think you might have to have a cable box to get that channel. I'm not really sure, but... Uh, Either way, Channel 80 is when you can catch these state championship games for today on Channel 80 on your New Wave Cable. And let's go up to uh, Class 3, the heartbreaker, New Matter County Central Falls to Stratford, 63-61. to uh, Stratford going on an 8-0 run to finish the game with the victory. I don't imagine Coach Day got a lot of sleep after that heartbreaker or any of the other kids either. Wow, they had a six-point lead with, what, less than two minutes to play? Mm -hmm. And then Stratford goes on that eight-to-nothing run, and then that odd play at the end with the ball going off poor Aston Newsom's head. And what's well, a tough way to lose. I mean, if you, if you get a good look and you just don't knock the shot down, you know, you can live with that. But just that odd sequence of events there at the end is just, I think that may be what's going to haunt New Madrid for, uh, for some time. It was right there for the taking, and, and you just got to, you just, you know, they have to feel like they just let one get away. Yeah. And no matter, you know, I haven't been there since 2002, and you see Charleston go every other year, and then, you know, they've got the team, probably the, you know, the best team they've had since 2002. Right. Very good team. You advance on a roll through the state tournament and get there, and they, they went on a roll in that second half. They went at, they, in the first half, you could tell they were, you know, Stratford's a pretty, pretty savvy team yeah. they, they played in that zone and kind of took away the strengths of uh new matter kind of took away the dribble penetration forced them to shoot outside new matter wasn't really hitting the outside shot frequently so they were hanging around it, it, and it did get up to a 12 point game stratford yeah was able to get up to a 12 point yeah, lead stratford came out just really hitting on all cylinders especially in the first half yeah and then uh new matter really came out Aggressive oh in the second half, Did they sixteen ever? to two run to start the half. Yeah, they they limited. They came out. They just upped their game offensively and defensively. Held Stratford to five points in the third quarter, and you thought, okay, now this is the New Madrid team we've been watching all season. We're gonna take control of the game, and then Stratford. We so they they were they were mentally tough. I mean, they just came back and and took that game away from them. Uh, so you got to take your hats off to them, but. Hit some big Boy, shots. for New Madrid, they're going to be thinking about what if. <laughs> yeah, the 8-0 run consisted of, you know, Stratford being down six with two minutes to go. One kid hit a three. Same kid. Yeah. Scored all eight of their points. Boswell. Now, that kid could yeah, shoot. Boswell hit the he, three. He had a good shot. Came down. New Madrid, uh, at that point, yeah, they were up three. Willie Jemerson commits a charging foul, I believe, at that yes. point. And uh, still, you know, it's not out of hand at that point. You know, New Madrid still with a three-point lead. They come back, Boswell hits another three. Wide open. The yeah, they worked the ball around. He was yeah. wide open. What it was, the kid was, you know, dribbling, dribbling right. And uh, I think no matter – I think they may have been in his own defense at that point, if I'm not mistaken. But either way, you know, one kid was guarding him and then, yeah, they, you know, they one kid picked him up and then left the kid open at the top. Right. They, just no, they didn't back switch. To Boswell. Yeah. yeah. They didn't switch. They both kept – the same guy, and he just kicked it back to Boswell, and he knocked it down to tie the game. Yeah, come down Stroked and it. you know, I think after one or two passes, Chris Farr shoots a quick three. Certainly not the look they were looking for, and gave the ball right back to Stratford. They had a minute, you know, a minute to go. They killed the clock all the way down, called right. timeout, and on the inbound pass, on the inbound play there, they were on the left sideline. A little miscommunication there. Right. Uh, I can't remember who, which players they were. I think it was Word and Clark. Uh, one was off of the inbounder to guard the the main guard that was going to be getting the inbound. He, they were kind of double teaming. Yeah. And then you know the the guy that was I think it was Clark. Either way, it was kind of hard to see watching it. But whoever was guarding the inbounder picked up 
the main guy that was getting the inbound, he he stayed with him. But then nobody was guarding. Nobody, I guess it was Boswell that inbounded nobody the picked play. up. Nobody, I, I didn't see. Yeah, it I don't know if it was sure. Boswell, but nobody picked yeah. up the guy, the kid who inbounded the ball. Yeah, so and it was just a quick give and go, and he had a clear yeah. lane. He he for drove the, the baseline, and Michael Walker stepped over to get in front of him. Drew, drew uh, committed the foul. He goes to the line, knocks down two free throws. Yeah. They get the two, uh, get the uh, the two point lead, and then you and know that, just that strange play at the yeah, end. Yeah, and then you know Jefferson came down, fourteen seconds left, had a wide open. Newsom. Yeah. I mean, he dribbled across. It was his own defense. He dribbled across and elevated through it to Newsom. He was wide All open. Alone but there was that. a backside defender that came down, deflected it out of bounds. Right. Great that play. That was the play of the game. Yeah. yeah great, that, great that, play. That saved on, the game. Great play on his behalf. And then they inbounded underneath with eight seconds. Kind of the same sequence, right. or just a little different positioning. Jemerson went right across the free throw line, elevated and dumped it down to Newsom. And he didn't have anybody. Un- in front of him, he had the two defenders that were helping out on Jemerson. Mm-hmm. One of them came behind him, and I think you know, asked, or Newsom went up. He was right under the basket. He went up and kind of double, double clutched. clutched. I guess he thought a defender was coming from his yeah from uh, behind him and trying he, maybe to head fake him a little bit. Yeah, there, he, but. he double clutched and hit the padding, and it bounced back. And what, what you say in the odd sequence, Jemerson behind him went up for it, the rebound, and Newsom did as well. Yes, they both had it. Newsom kind of let it. He, he just let it go. And Jemerson behind him lost his brought balance. It, you know, brought it brought it down to get possession of it. When he did, he hit Newsom in the head with the ball yeah. and lost control of it. And that lost was the his game. balance out of bounds. Yeah, yeah. That that's that that's the odd part of it. You know, we saw something very similar happen in Dexter's game against North County, the the girls' game there in the uh, sectional round, where if Dexter just dry, uh, just handles the rebound, mm-hmm. they win the game. But the girl, and she had it coming down, and Hannah Thurman did, and then she lost the ball. Well, had, she had one hand. Yeah. It just didn't really corral it. It yeah. just kind of went out. And, it lost yeah. control of the ball, and then North County, the girl laying flat on her back, gets the ball, hands it off to a teammate who gets fouled, ties the game, and they win it in overtime. Yeah. So, you know, those that's, that's just the way the ball bounces sometimes. Basketball can be a funny game like that. Um, yeah, true, and unfortunately, man. you know, the old saying, like we, uh, the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat, you know, somebody's got to feel that defeat. And sadly, uh, New Madrid uh, just let one get away, yeah. just flat let it get away. And, but they have had a wonderful season. Yeah, Boy, they, they playing they, the third really place game. Great season. Uh, they're playing Madison Prep yes. in that uh, third place game. And Strafford goes on to take on Barstow in the championship game. Barstow mm-hmm. going to be the favorite in that game. Right. Uh, had a very good year. I think ranked second in the state coming in. Father Tolton was Number top. one, and Madison knocked them off in the yeah. quarterfinals. So that, that's not – they've got about 12 losses, I think, on the year, but Madison Prep is always good. Yeah. And they've proved they're not a team to be taken lightly by their victory over Father Tolton. Yeah. So uh, that's going to be a tough game for New Madrid. And hopefully they can shake off mentally and emotionally that, that heartbreaking loss against Stratford and, and really come out and play hard and bring that third place home like Advance did. Yeah. Well, they, they've got a chance to end their season on a win. You know, and that's on, the way you want to go out. You you know, go only, out on only the champion and third place team wins their season with a win in basketball. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. But certainly a great season by New Madrid. You can tell after last year what they're going to have coming back they were going to be a very good team and you know Jimerson he provide he he provided a lot of memories this year especially in that sectional game right. at Charleston oh boy people will be talking about that game for years yeah that was that was one of the best basketball games I have ever seen that double overtime thriller from the three-pointer from Ewing to knock to tie the game at the end of regulation to to Jimerson stepping up and knocking those two free throws down with no time on the clock at the end of the first overtime to tie it again Boy, just a tremendous game from from both teams, and and like I said, we'll be talking about that for years to come. And you know, when another thing, when New Madrid looks back on this game, boy, they're going to look at on the one thing on the stat sheet they're going to look at is the, is the free throws. They've that's been they've been so good from the free throw line as a team, and just eight of eighteen against Stratford. Mm-hmm. There's your ball game. Yeah. So, um, boy, it was a tough one, tough one, tough pill to swallow, but a great season for New Madrid. It sure was, and. Uh... You know, things are going to change. You know, no matter they had this team coming along, a lot of seniors going to be leaving, and I think only maybe one returning starter. Yeah, Jabarcus Word yeah. is a, is a sophomore. I don't know. I don't know who exactly they had in their starting mix, but Jabarcus Word is going to be the main player 
coming back and uh, Chris Farr as well. That's about the only two players with uh, considerable playing time coming back. So that's that's what hurts when you know you've got that senior group and right. really got that you know experience, and then you know they they move on. So that's what makes it tough when you've got it really that, does that team that you've got developed you know coming for so long, and then it's then it's over. So that, that's what makes it right makes it tough to see those kids go. So. Uh, that pretty much wraps up classes one through three. You know, we got Scott County out of the you know the classes one through three going for the state title. It looks like they're going to be able to do that. And, right. Um, a couple of our girls teams. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't get to the girls games. Competing get those, for uh, state championships. Yeah. Let's get to those girls games. Naylor defeated Tuscumbia in the semifinals. No problem. Yeah. They advance on and got a good chance to win that class one. Yeah, state I, title. I really like their chances. I mean, you just look at the defense they played yesterday. The article I read. Um, said that they that Discumbia was averaging like 75 points a game, and Naylor held them to half that, and really really put it on them. So uh, Naylor is for a Class One team. They've got tall girls. I mean, they've got three starters that go five ten, five eleven, six foot. They've got good guard play. They've got senior leadership. They're well coached. Naylor is good year after year. It seems in girls basketball. So I really like their chances to uh, to win a state title today. Uh, they're they're just very very good everywhere. I really don't see any weaknesses at all. And you know they talk about battle tested, the especially in the girls division that Ozark Foothills Conference they play in against they get play teams like Neelyville and Twin Rivers and Greenville, Clearwater and those teams are just always good and they beat up on each other and they make each other better. So uh, they're they're another team that's really battle tested, and uh, I think that's showing come playoff time. Yeah. Yeah, Naylor got a chance to state championship. Not sure when that game's going to be played. It's it's a, it, it's really an evening game, if I yeah, remember. I think that it's around the, six o'clock. Yeah, six o'clock start for that one. Uh, and I think uh, Park Hills plays even later. They play. They play like eight o'clock tonight. Yes. Yeah. And uh, talking about Park Hills Central, they defeated Buffalo sixty to forty one, advanced to the championship game, and. Talking about a team that's really benefited from moving down from class four to class three. No doubt. They've really stepped it up and made a nice run in this right. tournament. Right. Yeah, the thing about class four, which we saw last year with that outstanding team that the Dexter Lady Bearcats have, um, unfortunately there's a juggernaut in there called Incarnate Word, one of the best teams in the country that um, Park Hills would have, wouldn't have beaten, had come in any closer to beating them than Dexter did last year. Um, so, yeah, they, they certainly benefited from playing down. But I tell you what, they had to beat a pretty good Saxony Lutheran team yeah. in that quarterfinal that game. That may have been your state championship Yeah, there. no doubt. So then Saxony Lutheran was ranked number one undefeated. Of course, Park Hills only lost one game all year. Yeah. So uh, they, they went to overtime, and Park Hills won by six. And then they've just rolled through Buffalo in the semifinal game and probably going to win the state championship. Uh, this evening at 8 o'clock. So we'll be rooting both Naylor and, and Park Hill Central on, and uh, I think that both teams will bring that title home here to southeast Missouri. Yeah. Now you don't see very often two teams playing for state championships for the girls' side. We see mm -hmm. it in the boys plenty of times, but the girls, you'll see one or two teams make it, but very rarely you see them playing for state championships. That's true. Yeah, that's very true. Usually maybe only see one girls' team maybe get up there. I really thought we would have three. I was surprised that uh, – uh, and I think Neelyville, Neelyville, yeah, they were in class two. I really expected to see yeah. them in Columbia. They were really solid. Lost to Clopton, I believe it was. Yeah, it? who got destroyed yesterday in their semifinal. They got beat by 50 points. Wow. I don't remember now who beat them. But um, I really thought Neelyville would, would, would be there in Columbia as well. But, you know, again, that's ups, upsets happen. Yeah, it was a close game mm -hmm. between Neelyville and Clopton. So, and it's uh, Park Hills and uh, Cardinal River, right? Cardinal yes, Ritter Cardinal the Ritter is that's who they're playing game. in the championship game tonight. Yeah, so uh, that'll be a late game, eight ten start, something like that. Yeah, it's really uh, late, probably the last game on the docket. Yeah, and remember that's Fox Sports Midwest Plus Channel eighty, not twenty five, Channel eighty on your New Wave cable. If you're able to get that channel, I think it uh, depends on if you've got a cable box or not. But nonetheless, Channel eighty on your New Wave cable, you can catch all the state championship games on your new wave cable channel 80 and let's uh quickly go over to class four and five travis so we've got some quarterfinal games taking place today this saturday and it's notre dame and westminster academy that's our local game that uh, kind of has local relevance there notre dame had a really nice game against potosi the other night winning 72 to 49 
the t- uh, defeating Potosi. They advance on, and uh, Notre Dame looking really good. Boy, they really did. They uh, Potosi hung around for a half, but they couldn't hang the second half. Of course, th- th- their problem was they only had one kid that could score, and Notre Dame really held him, shut him down in the second half. He only scored four points. Uh, so and that was their offense. So Notre Dame just really took over in the second half. They're another team. They're so deep. They got 11 seniors on the team, um, so they can substitute in and out. And they really don't lose. There's not much of a drop off there. Uh, they've got the superstar there and Quinn Pothras and a good supporting cast around him. Um, they're going to be a tough out. I, I expect them to beat Westminster. And, uh, and and make it to the Final Four. They've really got all the pieces in place for a state championship run. Yeah. I, you know, the sectional game with Potosi is the first time we've seen them this year. We haven't been able to get an Notre Dame game this year, but, man, they just really, really strong. They, they're a great passing team. I think that's what really stands out about them. They pass well from all positions. Yeah. You know, they this high-low concept that they work, it, they they work it to perfection. They they give and go out of it because their big guys can pass, they can move, and they've got great anticipation with each other about you know when to make their move, when to make their their cut and their passes. They're a very well passing team, and that's how they get a lot of easy baskets. That's right. And you know they shoot the three very well as well. Once they get that open three, they work that half court. They get that open three and they knock it down. You know, and Notre Dame has really been on a roll again since Christmas. You know, they won the the Southeast Missouri and Christmas tournament. And they since that time, they've lost one game, and that was to Jackson. So uh, they've really been on a roll as well. They're one of those three teams you mentioned earlier with New Madrid at the three-way tie, along with uh, Notre Dame, rather. Well, sorry, New Madrid in the three-way tie you mentioned. But Notre Dame and Jackson are the other two teams in that mix. Um, so Notre Dame has just had a great season. Every team, they've lost four games, and... They've also beaten the four teams that have beaten them, right? New Madrid beat them in the SEMO Conference Tournament, and then they turned around and beat New Madrid. Uh, Sykeston, the only blowout loss Notre Dame has had, really, was to Sykeston, and then they turned around and beat them in the district championship. So every team that's beaten them, they've flipped the script on them. Um, and we, we talk about battle-tested, playing through that tough, tough SEMO Conference uh, wars. And it's, I, think New, I think Notre Dame is, is primed. To, uh, to win a state championship. Yeah, and uh, they've got a good shot. Uh, we don't know a whole lot about these teams down down the road here, but I think Notre Dame will be right there in the mix, being able to, to go in there and potentially win a state championship this year. Right. Hillcrest has been there before. Middle career we know is usually pretty solid. Um, but um, they've got the talent uh, the Bulldogs do to compete and beat anybody in Class 4, I think. Yeah, certainly do. So. Good luck to the Notre Dame Bulldogs for this evening. And over in Class 5 for the boys, Jackson's in the mix. Uh, they advance in the sectional rounds. They defeated Viani in a close game. Yes. Jackson advances to the quarterfinal round. They'll take on St. Louis University High. And uh, I think Jackson's going to match up well against uh, SLU High. Yeah, and, I think uh, so. Um, SLU High, I mean, solid team, but they're just a few games above 500. And so I think Jackson should beat them. This is Jackson's third trip in three years to the quarterfinals. They haven't been able to get over that hump. But I think this is their year to make a run to the Final Four. They should beat SLU. Um, it's going to be tough sledding for them at Columbia. Some very talented teams there left yeah. in uh, in Class 5, especially Chaminade. Uh, they're really, really talented. Yeah. Nix is pretty good, Nix too. Nix has only got one or two losses, yeah. I believe. So, so uh, But they should get there. They should get to the Final Four. And, again, you know, Jackson's one of those teams. They have all the pieces in place. Yeah, a lot uh, of size. A lot of size. They've, they, they've got a lot of speed. They play good defense. They're well coached. They've got senior leadership. They have all the pieces in place. Um, Jackson can be a little inconsistent at times. I mean, they've, they've lost six games this year. Um, and so sometimes you, when the, I've seen them when they've just been flat on. I mean, they demolished Charleston twice. They destroyed Dexter. Uh, I've seen them play some just lights out basketball. But then there have been the, some of those games where, you know, they just for whatever reason just didn't show up. But I think they've got it all figured out now. They've really closed the season strong and avenged a loss there in the district championship to Popper Bluff, who beat yeah. them on their home court pretty soundly 
It was one of those games again where you think, well, yeah. which Jackson well, team showed you, up? But, well, but since then, they've just been on a tear. Yeah, you take that two-hour two, two hour trip up to Arnold to yeah. play at Fox High School on a severe or an yeah. extreme neutral court. You know, you kind of had to – Right, you know, throw throw the the rest of the games out of the mix because you're playing in very foreign territory when That's it comes true. to playing that far out for a district tournament. But uh, you know, Jackson been very good the past couple of years. They last year they had a team potentially to win it all. Mm-hmm. I think it was Webster Groves they lost to yes. last year, yeah. and then they went on and just went, and won it all, rolled it. And mm-hmm. uh, I think Jackson gave them the most competitive game on their way to the I to think the that's championship. Right. Yeah. And you know, they just happened to meet up with him in the quarterfinals rather than the semifinals or right. championship. But uh, Jackson last year had a team that was totally capable of winning a state title. And this year, looks like they've got it as well. They just uh, just got to put it together at the right time. And this looks like their best opportunity to make that Final Four this year. Right. I think the matchup works out best for them this year to make it to the Final Four. You know, they've got the they've got the superstar player, kind of like Notre Dame with Quinn Pothris there and mm-hmm. Yale commit Blake Reynolds. He's about six foot seven, and well, he can stroke the three pointer too if he gets the ball out there. So he can really do it all. And but he's got a very well balanced cast around him. They've got uh, two or three kids that are very capable of stepping up and scoring in double figures for the Indians. So they really they're they're a deep team. They have all the pieces in place as well, just like Notre Dame. And I expect we'll see them in Columbia, barring a major upset this evening from uh, Slough High. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that game. I think they're gonna think they're going to advance and finally get to that Final Four to where they can represent Southeast Missouri in Class Five Final Four. And I don't think that's happened, if I'm not mistaken, since uh, the Hansbro Hansbro days where Poplar Bluff played in Class Five. Mm-hmm. That would have been the 2004 school year uh, where they did win the the championship. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's the last time a team from Southeast Missouri is represented. I think that's, I'm sure that's right. Yeah. So it's been 11 years. Since the class five teams made it, and it's so tough. Yeah, class I mean, five is brutal. Man, once you get out of that district play, you're you're right there in the middle of St. Louis playing those tough teams out yeah. of St. Louis, right out of district right. play. And whereas, of course, that, that's where they're going to play the game up there at Lindenwood College there in St. Charles. Yeah, whereas you know, in class two and three, you kind of have to get to that quarterfinal game to where you're playing right. those tougher teams up there around St. Louis. So, uh, you know, it's it's their time, I think, to to finally get through and make that final four in Columbia and. I think they'll they'll be competing for the rest of the way as well. They've got it's just their size. They're so hard to match up with. You That's know, true. They're they're well defensively. They play the passing lane so good with their length. Right. They're I think their short team. their shortest starter is six foot two. Yeah. Even their guards are tall. So yeah. you know you get down to those smaller classes, you're you're lucky to have a center. Yeah. That's six it's foot funny two. we've we've had a couple games at Jackson this year, and uh, they they got a really neat thing there at Jackson. They've got uh, these kind of uh, life size printouts mm-hmm. of their players and they've got the you know the the you know the height stick beside them that says oh are, are you taller than a Jackson senior ball player and mm-hmm. you can go up there and measure how you measure up to them <laughs> and you know you can see them walk you could as you walk the gym you can see them and you just kind of look at those kids and it's like they're huge yeah, <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they and their life great, size and you see them they're you know they got Blake Reynolds at six seven or something like yeah. that and they're their point guard standing at like six two. It's you know, their point guard is. You know, I'm having to look up to their point guard on the right. wall. So yeah, they're they're it's they, a, they've really got all the pieces in place. If they'll just mentally be there, and and execute the game plan and, and play well, just play their game, they they're going to be a tough out. Even for some of these other uh, very talented schools we mentioned earlier. So, yeah. um, and when was the last time that SEMO was represented in the Final Four in every class like we have with the boys? If, presuming Notre Dame and Jackson get there. I don't think it's been done with five classes since it's went to five, but I think it has been in four. I mean, we've had plenty of instances where Scott County, Portageville, Charleston, and I think a, I think a Poplar Bluff team's made it in class four uh, or Cape a few times. I think it's happened with four classes, but I don't think since they went to class or five classes in 2003, I don't think it's happened. So this is a pretty big year if yeah. it all happens. And it's been a great year for SEMO basketball. We've yeah. had so many good teams and so much parity. It's been so much fun to watch. Um, this may be the best high school basketball season, maybe since the, you know, say going back to the Hansbro brothers. Yeah, I think across the board it's one of the best seasons. Yeah, I, mean, I really do too. There's been some seasons where you've had better teams, but just depth of talent and across the board, I think it's been – 
uh, the the most competitive season that I've ever seen in Southeast yeah. Missouri. You know, I've contributed to the SEMO Sports Zone Top 25 and and to another top 10 ranking on another website. And there are times you just feel like you could just pick the names out of a hat. <laughs> you know, where are you going to rank them? Because when you know, just from week to week, teams are beating up on each other, whether it's SEMO Conference or the Boot Hill Conference or. Uh, the SCAA conference, I mean, it's just they're, all the teams are so loaded, it seems like, and so balanced and just a lot of parity. It's just been a lot of fun. Yeah. This, is, this has been my favorite year of covering basketball in southeast Missouri just because every game that we've been at this year, it's been pretty much a tough game. You know, we'll do some games. We'll have blowouts, you know, because it, it happens. You know, it's you, know, right. at least you get a matchup and, you know, there's just always teams out there that aren't as good as the other teams. But for the most part this year, I don't think we've had very many blowouts at all. Mm -hmm. And it, I, more so this year, I think some teams that have routinely been at the bottom of their conferences are playing up right. to the you know top half of the conference. They're playing at a much higher level. And I think that's where we're seeing the competition. Not as much the top teams are playing so much better. I just think it's the – routinely weaker teams are playing much stronger. And I that's think why we've right. got a lot more talent across the board. Yeah, there have been a few teams in southeast Missouri that have just really struggled. I think we had three teams that didn't win a game this season. But uh, for the most part, everybody, it seemed like, was pretty competitive. I yeah. mean, you really had to bring it game in and game out. There just weren't a lot of gimmies on anybody's schedule this year. So, well, you take a look. And, and it's paid. Look at the dividends it's paid here in the postseason yeah. with all the district and sectional and Final Four representatives. Yeah, it's it's helped those teams that have actually been able to advance to, like we've been saying, get battle tested. When you have like, every night that you play in conference, you got a tough game. You got you had to bring yeah. it every night in your in your on your schedule. And if you didn't, you lost. <laughs> yeah. And we saw plenty of upsets this year. Yeah. I mean, you take a team. Just look at one of the. Weaker teams that we've seen in Southeast Missouri over the past few years. That's Richland. Richland picked it up. This picked year. it up this year. They sure you know, did. They won, won a seven or eight games. This year. They no. won a they won a game in districts. Beat Risco this year, yeah. which Risco is a team that's kind of hit their valley, you right. know, With some players moving out, but uh, you know, it's it's been a great year, and I'm going to miss it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be hard to duplicate this kind of season just across the board. I think we'll have some really good teams next year, but I don't think we're going to have the depth of teams. You know, conferences being four or five teams deep in yeah. conferences, I don't think we'll. Well, and see and, that again. and you're going to we're going to be losing a lot of our real superstar players, right? The Quinn Pothruses and the Willie Jemersons and the Delfinko Bogans. Yeah. Um, those Blake kids Reynolds, are all yeah. Blake. Yeah, Blake Reynolds, uh, Cortez Dobbins. So you know, a lot of these kids that we've just really enjoyed watching over the past four seasons. So, I mean, there's going to be that absence next year. I mean, you got Jeffrey Porter coming back for Scott Central, Al Young coming back for uh, Cape Central, Fred Thatch, of course, who had a breakout year as a freshman for Saxton. He'll be back. You know, but so, yeah, you're going to miss that too. You know, the, yeah. it was great seeing Bogan and Jimerson matching off, right, yeah. or, or Reynolds and Pothras, uh, or Statham and Pothras up yeah. at Cape Central. Even Andre Statham, Bluff. Stocks, Stocks, Chris yeah. Stocks at Popper Bluff. Had th uh, he, he got a thousand points this yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, you know, or Cortez Dobbins, Indiquel Presbury down at Haytai. Dobbins playing for Malden. So just so many kids that, and, and that'll that'll move on to the next level in college. But but again, we're gonna we're gonna lose a lot of that. Look, uh, going forward to next season. So, SEMO basketball is always a ton of fun, but this has really been a season to remember. It sure has, and we're going to miss it. Uh, it's, it's, we've only got a week left, and it's been a memorable one for sure. And I just hope we can get Notre Dame and Jackson in there. So I really do, really too. Just they should advance, um, but upsets happen, as we have uh, certainly seen over and over again. you got to bring it every game. Yeah, sure do. So, It'll be coming to an end, and uh, we got uh, championship games taking place today. And remember, you can watch those games on Channel 80 on your New Wave cable. And for anyone watching on the website, excuse me, if you got Dish Direct, I don't know what channel uh, the the channel is on your provider, but it's Fox Sports Midwest Plus, not Midwest. As you watch Cardinal games on uh, the Midwest channel, it's the Midwest Plus. And it's 80 on your New Wave cable. You can watch those championship games this afternoon. So we'll be looking forward to Scott County winning that, hopefully. And uh, Along with the Naylor Lady Eagles, yeah, the Naylor Lady Park, Hill Central, Park Hill Central, Lady Rebels. Yep. 
So a lot to look forward to. Right. And then on, uh, of course, Final Four next week for Classes 4 and 5. Yeah, we'll be wrapping it up. And, of course, we'll be getting into the real March Madness when tournament time comes around. And big storyline there, Kentucky. Kentucky. For that undefeated season. Yeah, there's so. Kentucky and everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way it looks right now. So yeah, I know. It's I Kentucky versus the field. Yeah, I think. <laughs> Yeah, everybody so, else playing for second. Yeah, yeah they so boy, they've just they're just head and shoulders above. It seems to me they've had a few close calls, uh, but man, when they're on, they are flat on. And uh, Mizzou's awful season mercifully came to an end the other night. <laughs> uh, thank you, South Carolina. It was almost a mercy killing. Oh man, when's the last time Missouri only won nine games in a season? Oh, they were so bad. But Kim Anderson's going to do a good job. He just what well, he boy he was left with the cupboard just flat bare. Um, and he's, he's going he's, he's got he's got a busy off season, isn't he? Man, he'll tell it. <laughs> the good news is there's no place to go but up. Yeah, <laughs> last place in the SEC. Yeah. So only won nine games, lost twenty three. That's just terrible. But he's a good coach and he's going to do a good job. And give him a couple seasons, he'll have Mizzou competitive again. Yeah, we'll see. So. Very exciting time. Be sure to tune in the rest of the way. We'll have roundtables going forward. And we're getting to the spring sports, uh, baseball, softball, track and field. We'll be getting into that pretty soon as teams are finally getting to, to where they can go outside. Probably not this weekend uh, due to the rain coming in, but starting to warm up. Right. Maybe we'll get some dry weather and yeah, these th- kids can this, start working This time outside. last week we had a foot of snow on the ground, but that's all gone <laughs> now for the most part. So. Yeah, they'll be getting back out there. And, of course, like you say, we got baseball and softball. And spring softball uh, is going to be a lot of fun this year. Got a lot more schools that have gotten involved in spring softball. Yep. And we saw Kennett win a state championship last spring, the yep. Kennett Lady Indians. But it'll be a lot tougher to do it this year, a lot more teams in the mix. Uh, I think it was last year the first time they had a state yep. championship in, for the, uh, for the spring, with spring yeah. softball. So that'll be a lot more fun this year. And then, of course, track and field, golf, and um, – boys tennis so a lot of good sports to look forward to here uh, in the spring sure we'll be looking forward to it and that's all we got for you today and we appreciate you for tuning in as always we'll see you next week and until then i'm tyler wagner along with travis with for you today take care everyone